Well, I'm going to take a quick uh, aside here from woodworking to electrical. I've got my trailer wired. Uh, I have outlets and a light switch and another outlet back there set up for my uh, long cable to bring uh, power to the trailer so that when I get to the side I can plug in and turn on the lights and have power in here. So we got it all wired up and uh, had a problem um, when I uh, originally hooked these lights up and didn't have the stuff to finish up I just ran an extension cord in and these lights worked great. We got everything all wired and I did have uh, my electrician come over and do this. Uh, he's only been an electrician in his life. He's 60 plus years old and he's uh, uh, a uh, residential, uh, commercial and industrial. He's got all the licenses. And when we would, after we got it all set up, we turn the switch on, the GFI would, would go. And so I have to have a GFI in the trailer. It would be dangerous not to have things run through a GFI, but they're kind of finicky. These are brand new lights. And so we started troubleshooting and took them apart one at a time, disconnected each one. So we we're only using one light at a time. Only one was wired. And whether the bulbs are in or not, it didn't matter. It would trip the GFI. So with two of them disconnected, only this one working, we pulled the ballast down and just let it hang. That's all we did. Turn it on, it would work. It wouldn't trip the GFI. So we disconnected this one, went to the second one, same thing. Pull the ballast down. There's, the ballast just sticks into a, a, a little uh, slot and then there's a screw. So somehow it's getting unbalanced there just slightly. Well, it's three brand new lights. So our thought was is that we get three more, it's gonna do the same thing. So I've gotta come up with a way to keep these from, I think it's gonna work, we're gonna find out here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some of this uh, Vicor. It's basically just kind of a rubberized membrane that's sticky that I use to wrap windows when I'm building a house. I'm gonna, it's pretty thick and so it's an insulator. I'm gonna take uh, some of this stick it up underneath and that's what I'm going to attach the ballast with and rather than using screws to attach the ballast I'm going to drill some holes and then use zip ties so I won't have any connection there now GFIs are kind of finicky you could have a bad GFI and I haven't changed that out um, but we're pretty sure that's not it um, we tested it, it in some other ways but it's it, in some ways it's kind of black box stuff. Um, I'm also plugged into a GFI in the shop, so the shop is GFI. I've I've done it this way in the past, and it's always worked. Um, when I get to a job, 99% of the time, when I plug my trailer in, I'm plugging into a GFI. If I'm plugging into the exterior or into the garage, that's GFI. I I can't take the chance of plugging the trailer into a non-GFI and then having the, the trailer could get hot then and, and it could be dangerous. So got to have the GFI in the trailer and a lot of times we're going to be plugging into a GFI. Most of the time we're going to be plugging into a GFI. So that can sometimes be problematic. But again, I've done it uh, for many, many years and haven't had any problems with it. So we're going to see if this solution works. If this doesn't, then uh, I will change out the GFI in the trailer to see if possibly that's bad. It, again, we've done some tests on it. It seems to be fine. We've tested some tools and other things to run it and GFI to GFI and that works. So it, it seems to be isolated to the lights. One of the other options is to get three new lights and change those out. Um, but again, as soon as I touch one of these, any one of these uh, ballasts to the um, the shell or the housing of the light is when it will blow the GFI. So onward and upward, here we go.
Okay, that worked. So just isolating those ballasts, it must be something in the construction. <clears throat> We're going to let the supply house know because uh, this will probably be an ongoing problem when they're wiring houses. But at least I've got it working in the trailer. So now when I come in and, and I still have to drill the hole in the floor to run the cord, now I'm just running it out through. But uh, I plug it in and then I have a light switch. I've got uh, 12 feet of light and plenty of light to work on the bench and uh, see all of my tools. I have uh, six outlets here and I have two in the back. One is the GFI which everything comes in through the GFI and then I have uh, the ability to <clears throat> plug the compressor in there. So uh, that's going to be it for the electrical. I don't need anything to run vacuums and all like I did in the uh, in the uh, mobile wood shop, I had dual circuits. I had the ability to plug in directly into a breaker panel if I needed to and have two circuits, or I could run it, plug it into an outlet like this. So that was a little more sophisticated. This is all I need. When I pull on the job, I'll have power and I'll be able to get my tools out again. This is the awesome rolling toolbox, not the awesome rolling mobile wood shop. All right, I've got the electrical done. Now I'm ready to get back to putting the drawers together and start loading the trailer. If you like these videos, remember to subscribe to the Paul Combs YouTube channel and uh, give these videos a like. And more important than that, uh, if you can share them, that would be really helpful. If you'd like to get a set of any of the Paul Workbench plans, click on the link right here in the video. When you get to my website, click on the link for the Paul Combs store. Once you're at the Paul Combs store, choose your plan or package of plans. And then um, almost immediately, within a couple of minutes, you'll receive an email receipt. At the bottom of the receipt, at the very bottom, you will find a link and a password so you can download the plans right away. And also, if you do get a set of plans and build one of these benches for yourself, I would greatly appreciate it if you would email me a photo of your bench and maybe you with your bench. I have a Facebook and Pinterest page with uh, just for the Paul plants, and I uh, it's really neat to put up pictures of people from all around the world who have built the plan for themselves. Thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.